Hi, my name is Rafael Tauminger and I'm Global FAE Manager at IR Systems. In this short video, I want to show you the IR Universal Project Converter that can be used to migrate virtually any project to IR. You can use it to migrate GCC project to IR or even other competitive tool to IR or even between versions uh, from IR. So the use it's uh, very simple. If I open the IR embedded workbench that you uh, might already be familiar, uh, we of course have it for different architectures, RISC-V, AVR, ARM for example, and uh, way uh, more. We include in our tool some uh, project uh, converters, uh, but the one I'm trying to show you, it's what I said, it's the universal project uh, converter. So the way it works, is you mainly need to uh, install this universal uh, project converter or migration tool and it is straightforward here uh, just a few steps and then uh, you can have everything up and running so you of course need to select the installation uh, folder from uh, the IR embedded workbench uh, you might have it in a different folder or customized so once I complete this step here it will be really straightforward and once I open the embedded workbench again here uh, you will notice that there is a new menu available here and it's named add new source folder so the way it works is mainly that it will use a source folder or a root folder and from there mainly populate the project by following exactly the same structure by subfolders and then all the files will be, be placed automatically into the project and even um, the references should head files uh, will be added to the settings so how does that work i have here uh, a project for free artos and uh, i will migrate this project to ir so how does it work so first what i need to do i have here the embedded workbench and we are going to use in this case the IR embedded workbench for ARM and I need to start by creating a new project so I will create a new empty project and I could place this project of course uh, anywhere uh, in uh, my computer here but I will of course try to follow and uh, keep it inside the project folder here so I will just name it as project it can be project 1 so this is the first step uh, it will just finalize this uh, process here of creating uh, the project and what i need to do from here is to run this add new source folder so what will happen here is that i need to point uh, to uh, the folder that includes all the source files and uh, header files and everything needed for this project and once I complete this step here, it will just create a project file for IR and it's already asking us to reload it. Yes, we want to do that. And once I complete this step here, you will see that the project has been completely populated here. And you can see that uh, the exact same folder structure uh, is being kept here. Uh, and then we of course have all the files uh, and so on available here. So this is the first step. Uh, next step is of course to do uh, the project settings. And this means we need to select a device, uh, do some adjustments uh, maybe on the linker file or even um, select a driver for debugging. So let's do that now. So what we need to do first, as I said, is to select a device. In this case, I'm actually using an STM32F429. Uh, device I will select it here so as you can see uh, the list of devices it's used here so it would work for any or family any uh, device of course and I can select here what I want so this is uh, the first step and then of course there might be some other settings you might be willing to adjust you can just do that here in this case uh, I also want to enable the CM6 since I'm using uh, the ST hall drivers I want to enable that too here and very very good here also is that 
aside of already creating you this complete tree here of the project, it will of course also make sure to include everything about the preprocessor, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but then, uh, of course, um, since I'm using the whole driver, I know here that I need to just define this or use this uh, macro in the project. So please check your make files or uh, your project settings that you have from uh, the, the tool from competition to make sure you're also declaring uh, these symbols here. So I will use the whole driver that's known. And as you saw, I'm using the STM32F4 uh, to 9. And then I can, of course, use XX here uh, to make sure that the drivers behave uh, correctly. And final thing here, uh, I might use some inline semantics and so on, but that's a minor thing, of course. Uh, the linker file is, of course, here as default. I could do adjustments if I want, just by overriding it, but that's not needed by now. And then, of course, once my project is building fine, I want to be able to do the debugging. I can use, of course, the simulator, any uh, of the other supported uh, drivers here, but in this case, I'm using the IR iJet also. So once this step is completed, I can just confirm here and be aware then, yes, uh, we uh, created a project, we are including all uh, the files, we have the preprocessor, we have uh, the macros defined it. Uh, of course, when I start to build this project, uh, it might be that uh, I get some warnings still. Uh, so be aware that you still need to do some extra effort. Uh, of course, uh, migrating a project might take weeks, one, two weeks maybe of effort, but by using this tool, you can maybe reduce it to a few minutes and I will show you how this is possible here. So uh, I did a selection uh, here of the device and so on. So I can start by trying to build this project and let's see what we get here. Of course, first uh, it asks uh, here for a workspace. I just need to save this here. And once it starts to build, yes, of course, we already got some uh, warnings and rebuild errors here. And if I look here, uh, it's mainly um, duplicate files here. And yes, uh, of course, uh, I'm using free Artos here and there is a dedicated system STM32 for it. And I don't need to use the file that it's uh, delivered on the templates from uh, the ST uh, library. So if I look here, we have it on the driver CMC's device. So I can just make sure that I localize here this uh, file or even the structure and is under templates. We don't want to use that here and I can just exclude it from the build. This might be very common that uh, in uh, the project folder, you might have some files that are not really being used during the build or in your project. So either you clean it in advance or you just exclude it from the build. And that's what I'm doing here. So uh, good, so I can go to the next step. Let's try to build now to see what we get. It's looking way better now. Uh, some files are being built. Uh, the whole drivers, very good. So let's continue here to see what is the next step that we need to adjust. Okay, we got some build errors here. And yes, of course, I can see it. It's using USB, uh, but this project was not using the USB drivers at all. So if I look here under, under Free Artos middleware, so I can see that there is under ST this STM32 USB device library. I'm not using it at all in this project, so it's a lot of files there, uh, and I don't need it now either. I, excluded from the folder, but since I'm not using it until now, maybe in future, yes, I will not use it, it in this build. So I can go to the next step, of course. So it's linking, uh, but I'm still getting some um, uh, errors here. And if I look here on the message, of course, it's about malloc free. So it's the memory heap manipulation part of free Arthur's. And I can see here, yeah, it's duplicate definitions in hip underscore one, two. Of course, um, if you uh, know free artists, uh, that's of course here under uh, the source. If I look under portable memory management, you should actually only use one of these 
and uh, the tool uh, is not aware of that of course it included all the files uh, so we need to decide what we want usually I'm familiar here with hip4 so as I said it's all about uh, the memory management malloc free uh, the hip and so on uh, I will keep this one and exclude all uh, the others so I can just exclude these files from uh, the build and we have to exclude the extra ones here too and let's just save one file at the end here so now we should be good so let's see if we get a bit more lucky here now if I build this and yes so we managed to move the project do the settings and I'm not getting any errors or warnings anymore so that's a good sign so of course uh, you might still need to do some adjustments you will run your application but in this case I already selected the iJet and now I'm ready to connect to the target so if I download my own application here I'm connecting to the target and if everything goes well I should end on main here after the download so the debugger is connecting yes perfect we just connect the domain so all the features registers and all the fancy capabilities with breakpoints and so on it's all available here but if i leave this running for a while i just click go here i want to see if it's really working uh, okay we can see in the target some things happening leds blinking and so on uh, but the best way i can show you that this is working fine if i enable the timeline and if i'm using interrupts and everything it's fine this should be available here and yes as you can see uh, we have actually some breakpoints being triggered and it is running here so very good as you can see in just a few steps by using this uh, universal project migration uh, tool uh, you can migrate projects and use it here with IR and start exploring all the nice capabilities. Very good. So if you want to learn more or uh, get any assistance from us, please uh, check our website at IR.com. Uh, we have a special section about uh, migrating uh, to IR. So you can even get help from our experts. So we have many documentation here available, many documents, guides, some converting tools, including this one. And of course, you can reach out to us so we can help you further to uh, assist you on the migration of uh, your project. Thank you. I hope you like this video and hope to see you soon.